Hello folks, welcome back. In this section we are going to talk about branches and why do we need branches and what are the branching strategies we can use to work efficiently with our code. Knowingly or unknowingly we have already started working with our branches. Whenever we do any commits on our repositories we might have seen that a branch called master is updating right. So by default whenever we create a repository it creates a branch called master and all our commits are go and sit on the master branch. Master branch is a default branch which comes whenever we create a repository. Apart from master branch we can create our own branches and after creating our own branches we can remove the master branch as well. It is not mandatory that you should maintain master branch. It is just a default branch which comes while creating our repository. But most of the cases if we are practicing we usually do on our master branch itself. So now what are the advantages of using branches? Before talking about branches more deeper let's understand how devops flow works then we can come back to the branches so that you can understand better this is the big picture of devops okay a typical devops workflow where we have source code management system nothing but scm i can replace this one with github as well but let me keep it as a generic as a scm whenever our code is available over here in the devops workflow the code can be pulled by a build tool and it builds the code and also it do the unit testing, code quality analysis, code security analysis, all this testing and analysis it do to make sure that our code is following code standards or we are writing better code for this application. Once this is done, if our build is successful, it is going to create artifacts. Artifacts nothing but the outcome of our code compilation. If it is a Java code, we build var or jar files as a outcome file. If it is a .NET, we get .exe files. Like that, what kind of code you are building, the outcome of the artifacts may vary. Once we got artifactories, we need to deploy it on the server. To deploy it on the server, we can use deployment tools. This is the typical workflow which happens in the DevOps. Now to understand better we will just avoid all this and we will talk about only SEM and server and this is already in place and everything is working fine. Before discussing further more about this topic let me give you a quick update. This video is from my new course called git and github for devops engineers. I have launched this course two days before on Udemy platform. If you wish to enroll for this course I am giving a referral link in the description of this video. By using that one you will get this course for 10 dollars or euros. If you are in India you are going to get it for 360 rupees. If you have already enrolled for my complete devops course then you no need to enroll for this Udemy course because old videos are replaced with the new videos. So you can see the latest videos of git and github in this course. That's all let's jump back and discuss about branches. If that is the case this is my development system where I want to push my code onto the github. Okay, in github we have master branch. Now I would like to push my code over here. Whatever code we are pushing over here, it get built and test and uh, generate artifacts and get deployed into the server. That is the workflow it is happening. Just assume that it is already in place. Now I am building my code and I have done my first commit on my master branch. Whenever I do my first commit on my branch, I don't know whether this code is working fine or not. But as a DevOps workflow, it takes that code and build, test and deploy it on the server. Assume that this code is working fine and I have deployed application is working fine. Okay. Thanks for the DevOps process which made my process very easy. Now again I would like to do some changes to my code. Why? Because this is not complete code. It is a piece of code. Now I come up with new changes. Whenever I pushed my code there is some bug but build is successful and we deployed that application on the server. Now the application which was running fine earlier it may break down due to the latest code whatever I have pushed. And this is not one time process we regularly do our commits on the master branch and each time whenever we do our commit we are not sure whether this code is going to work or not on the server. Then there is no point of taking or deploying each piece of code, right? That is where branches comes into the picture. If we create a new branch and only pushing working code onto that branch 
and deploying from the new branch is more efficient way of handling right now this is working code now i have pulled this code onto other branch and uh, in this branch i have enabled my devops workflow now whenever i see code on only production branch then only the build and deployment will happen on this system otherwise it won't happen let's assume that this code is working fine i have checked in that code into the production branch and it get deployed over here my application is working fine now next code this is not working so i am not pushing on to production branch this is also not working now this code is working now i am going to pull or check in that code onto the production system and replace the old application with the new application again this time also my server is up and running why because previous code was working and this code is also working next again we have enhanced our application with a few more features and it is also working then i can check in that code onto production branch and replace the existing application in this case your system is always up and running and your customers may not face any problem moreover they can see the latest features on the application without any problem that is what we are expecting right in this case if i am only using master branch each and every deployment i need to worry whether my code is working or not whenever i create another branch and if i am deploying from this branch i can confidently say that this is working code that is how branches helps us to avoid problematic code get deployed onto the systems now you may ask that how do we know this code is working fine or not that i am going to explain in the next video where we talk about branching strategies thanks for watching and see you there